Hello everybody, welcome to Campus 101 exam curriculum, curriculum series. My name is Dr. Piro and today we're going to be looking at a very simple topic that is very simple, simple, um, simple topic that has shown, you know, has surfaced in your exam um, a few times in the past 10 years. I've seen this question about three to four times in the last 10 years, all right? So it's so simple, it's just good to just know the answers to this question before you step into your exams. And today we're going to be looking at light bulbs. And you know, we owe the invention of the light bulb to who? Yeah, that famous scientist from history, Thomas Edison. So he's the one responsible for giving us this tiny headache and the beautiful light bulb that we use today. But straight to the exam question. Today we're going to be looking briefly at what a cathode ray tube is. Cathode ray tube. And then we're going to be looking at fluorescent light bulbs. Now quickly, let me give us a background. We know that solid matter exists in three main phases, or four now, but let's say three. So solid, liquid, and gases. All right. We know that solids can be conductor, be conductor, be conductors of electricity. Solids such as you know copper, steel, all these can conduct electricity. And liquids too can conduct electricity. Liquids such as salt solution can conduct electricity. But do gases conduct electricity? Now. This is what cathode rays proved. It proved that yes, gases can actually conduct electricity, but the conditions, but the, um, but there must be particular conditions that are met before they are able to conduct electricity. Now, and this is the structure of a cathode ray tube. Pay attention now. So we get a tube, a cylindrical tube like this, and then on one side we put a plate. A plate means a metal. On the other side we put another plate. These plates we'll name these plates as the anode. All right, and this plate we're going to name as the word the cathode. Yes, exactly, cathode ray tube. Now, in this tube, we're going to put gases, and the gas we're going to put here, we're going to put a very an inert gas. Give me an example of an inert gas. Exactly. So we can put argon. All right, we can put argon, or we can put helium. Now, for those of you, if you are taking physics, you are likely taking chemistry as well, and then you know argon and helium to be noble gases noble gases now so we put argon and neon argon and helium argon or helium inside this tube the next thing we're going to do on this tube is we are going to decrease the pressure we're going to decrease the pressure such that the gas molecules don't have to move around at such a fast speed so so far what have we done one we have used a vacuum tube vacuum tube second thing is we reduce the pressure Third thing is, we filled it with inert gases. Inert gases. Now, the next thing we're going to do to this tube is that we're going to coat this tube. We're going to line this tube here with a substance that can reflect light. That can reflect light. And what substances can reflect light? These substances are called fluorescent substances. All right. So we add a fluorescent substance such as phosphorus. 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 So we put a fluorescent substance to coat the tube. Now at this point, we still will not see any conduction of electricity. Why? Because we have not applied electricity across the cathode tube. So now let's apply electricity across this cathode tube. Alright? So if you are a physics student, you know this is the symbol for you know cells. Now when we apply electricity here, what we found out as what we found out in science is that a ray, a bright ray, shoots from the cathode to the anode. And these rays are normally not visible. And what are responsible for these rays? We discovered that electrons, electrons are fired from the cathode. High velocity electrons are fired from the cathode. When they are fired from the cathode, electrons are not visible to the are not visible to the naked eye. But what we do is that in addition to argon here, we also add mercury. We add mercury. So when those high speed electrons hit the mercury atoms, they knock off electrons from the outermost shell of the mercury atoms. When they knock out electrons from the outermost shell of the mercury atom, it also charges. It also charges the helium, the inner gases therein. When the gases are charged, don't forget that this gas, these gases have um, a full electrons in their outermost shell. All right, they have full electrons in the outermost shell. But these new electrons knock out some, 
all right so they have additional electrons in their outermost shell when this happens some of these electrons are knocked off of their outermost shell and then they contact the fluorescent substance the phosphorus and when they make contact with this um, um, fluorescent substance such as phosphorus what we see is that we begin to see light all right and then this light is that we see here are what they are cathode rays and i can as well tell you that cathode rays are charged they are charged all right so cathode rays are charged and then this this setup that we have made here is referred to what as a cathode ray tube now this principle is what is applied in the production of the modern bulbs that we have in the olden days what that brilliant scientist did back then in the olden days was he made a filament a filament bulb and what a filament bulb is essentially i hope you can see this what a filament bulb is essentially is that you put a filament filament means a very thin wire and then you connect electricity to the end of this bulb here and when this metal is heated to a very high temperature a very high temperature so we use a metal such as tungsten when it's heated to a very high temperature it heats it, it, it heats up and then it's red and then it begins to shine and then we appreciate it as as light but the problem with this bulb and this is the disadvantages of the filament bulb is that it consumes a lot of energy so it is energy consume, consuming that's one two it is what it, it generates a lot of heat it generates a lot of heat three they ha it has a short lifespan because after some time this filament this tungsten filament will burn out and then the bulb dies so it has a short lifespan all right it has a short lifespan the, the fault thing about filament bulbs is that they are not actually beautiful so they are not really fine all right so aesthetically they are not very pleasing now what the advantages that fluorescent bulb give us and fluorescent bulb apply this principle so instead of using a filament replace this filament with what a vacuum tube all right, so let me draw this. I hope you can see it well. So the modern day bulbs that we buy at electrical shops, they are no longer filament bulbs, all right? So, and here we apply electricity to, to this bulb, all right? So instead, we have replaced it with gases. So it is filled with gases. The next thing we have done here is that we have coated it with a fluorescent substance, substances such as what, such as, Phosphorus. The next thing that we have done here is that we have reduced the pressure in this light bulb. The summary, the advantages of this fluorescent light bulb is that it uses less energy. So the energy consumed is very low, so a lower amount of energy. Very small amount of heat is generated. It has a longer half light and it's and they are beautiful to look at. The light generated can be of different colors. Here you can only have that yellowish color but here you can have red blue green any color of your pleasing so this uh this is the principle of this so this forms the principle of cathode rays and then fluorescent light bulb in addition we have also looked at the advantages all right so i've also looked at the advantages of of using of using fluorescent bulb so i hope you enjoyed it it's a very simple topic but it's important that we know the principle of cathode rays and then we know how fluorescent bulb work. So in summary, we looked at the cathode ray tube made up of a vacuum that is lined with a fluorescent substance. The pressure in there is reduced and then inert gases such as helium is used. We also put a tinge of substances such as mercury. When we apply electricity across this plate, we see that rays move from the cathode to the anode, showing us that gases at low pressure under the right substance, um, circumstances can conduct electricity. We also looked at how the older bulbs were made and then how newer bulbs are made. And newer bulbs use less energy, produce less heat, have a longer half-life and then have produced very beautiful light. So this is how um, the cathode ray Bulb, um, tube work and this is how the principle of operation of fluorescent lights. Thank you and see you in your other physics videos.